heads up, uh, we're reviewing Scratch Super Fuel, but it's the same thing as Scratch Super High Carb, so we might even title the video that. Uh, same ingredients, same everything. Everything is identical. Uh, and then Alan Lim, I know you watch the show, that's the Scratch CEO. If we're wrong, feel free to comment. Scratch was founded by Dr. Alan Lim. He's a sport physiologist, and I believe he also coaches uh, a pro cycling team. Is that right? Uh, I know he used to. So he designed Scratch for cyclists, triathletes, runners, just the typical endurance athlete. So Dr. Alan Lim, he created Scratch because he wanted to create something that tasted less sugary and also used more natural ingredients. I believe Scratch uses primary fruit as their flavoring. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what is in the ingredients here. Looks like the first ingredient is cluster dextrin, trademarked, which is highly branched cyclic dextrin. Alex, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are it's very similar to maltodextrin and functions similarly, uh, but it might actually make the beverage less sweet. So if you like spending extra money for less sweetness, you can do that. It also is harder to mix. Yes, and then I believe the glycemic index of highly branched cyclic dextrin is a little bit lower than maltodextrin, is that right? I think it depends. Okay. Close. And what about the gastric emptying rate of uh, highly branched highly branched cyclic dextrin versus maltodextrin or sucrose? Oh my gosh, I don't know for sure. And I think the reason is, I don't think it actually makes a measurable difference, but I could be wrong. Yeah, if I'm remembering correctly, I believe the highly branched cyclic dextrin, I feel like that's a tongue twister for me. HBCD. HBCD, <laughs> HBCD, uh, can't talk today. It does expedite gastric emptying a little bit, but I don't remember the specific metrics. I, specific I wouldn't be surprised metrics. if it empties from the stomach faster, but I think the research is highly equivocal as to whether it actually causes faster absorption or a greater peak amount of absorption that you can do during exercise. One key point about HBCD is that while it might have a slightly different gastric emptying time or a slightly different uh, GI glycemic index, it functions essentially the same as any other glucose source during exercise, whether the glucose is coming from maltodextrin, or HBCD, or just straight dextrose, it functions really, really similar. Lab scientists have a very hard time teasing it apart in terms of performance effect. So let's look at the second ingredient. So the second ingredient after highly branched cyclic dextrin is fructose, then citric acid, sodium citrate, lemon oil, lime oil, lemon juice, and lime juice. And that's it. What are your thoughts on that ingredient list? Oh, I have yet to ask Dr. Alan Lim why the oils instead of uh, like extracts like extract, or yeah. um, natural flavors, something like that. Oil isn't usually something I would want to put in a sport fueling product, but it must not be that much oil because there's not even half a gram of fat in, there's zero grams of fat listed, which means we know there's less than half a gram of fat in the each, each serving. And since each serving has a hundred grams of carbs in it, that's like vir virtually no fat, so it's not a concern. Yeah, so if you look at the serving size, it's seven scoops of this, and that's 400 calories. There's zero grams of fat, which is awesome. There's 400 milligrams of sodium per serving, 100 grams of carbohydrates, and zero protein. So the interesting thing here is that there's 100 grams of carbohydrates, but only eight grams of sugar. What does that tell us, Alex? That tells us that 92 grams of the carbohydrate come from HBCD, which is a pure glucose source. Watch our maltodextrin video to figure out what it looks like when you string glucose together. HBCD is just a different variant of that with more branches in it. What that means though is that if you're going to take one serving of this per hour, which is the recommended dosage I believe, you are likely to have uh, gut upset because you're consuming 92 grams of glucose per hour. That's a lot of glucose. Let's look at how they recommend we use this product. So it says to use Add seven scoops to eight fluid ounces of water. Shake vigorously. Then add eight to 12 additional fluid ounces of water and shake again. For better mixing, let it sit for 15 minutes before use. And then it says one serving provides 400 kcals or calories in a bottle. Use more or less mix per bottle depending on your caloric needs. It's a little bit ambiguous um, as far as how much they want to use, but I think that 400 calories or that seven scoops per 16 to 20 fluid ounces for seven scoops right here. Eight it's, plus eight to 12 mm -hmm. is 16 to 20. Yeah, um, okay. Good job, Dr. Allen Lim. <laughs> <laughs> Arithmetic, <laughs> all right. I don't think it says how frequently they want you to consume that. It doesn't say anywhere specifically on the package that I'm seeing, like how fast they recommend you 
consume this. They said that you could add a little bit more mix to your water or a little bit less depending on your needs, but I think the 400 calories per 16 to 20 fluid ounces is their like starting point. Hmm. I don't think in fluid ounces, I think in liters. So let's just see what that would mean for the concentration per liter of water. Can I just pause this for a second? Mm -hmm. I'm getting lost in all the details and I just want to throw out one key, uh, key, key user experience detail with this product. Um, for those of us who don't like to read directions, I put this in a bottle with some water and I tried to shake it and I swear I pulled my bicep trying to get it to mix. <laughs> Like for real, it is so hard to mix. Well, I mean, that's why they give you specific instructions on how to do it. They say eight fluid ounces, then you add the scoops, and then you add more water. You probably did not do that. I minored in chemistry and I hate <laughs> lab chemistry, so. <laughs> so it says per liter of water, like based on the recommendations here, it's going to be 169 roughly to 211 grams of carbohydrate per liter of water. And then there's going to be roughly 600 and 77 to 845 milligrams of sodium per liter of water. So that's a lot of carbs, not mm -hmm. a ton of sodium. This is another fuel that sort of is either, you need to add a sodium source to your mix for warm weather or it's a cold weather fuel. This is not something that you would want to use in isolation on a hot day. It means that if you have a high caloric need or you need a lot of carbohydrates, but you're not sweating a ton because it's cold and you have salty sweat, this probably won't be sufficient as far as your sodium needs. You'll probably need to add sodium to this. Definitely need to add sodium. Can you speak a little bit more to the glucose to fructose ratio here? Yeah, so glucose fructose ratio optimal is like at least two to one glucose to fructose. And just a reminder, uh, glucose and fructose are both monosaccharides and they are the two primary monosaccharides that go through your gut transporters for monosaccharides during exercise. They work well together. You need both together when you're exercising to maximize how much you can absorb with good gut comfort. It turns out closer to a one to one ratio of glucose to fructose is probably better than two to one. And two to one is definitely better than three to one or four to one or 10 to one, which is what this is. It's 92 grams of glucose for eight grams of fructose, which mm -hmm. means it's actually closer to like 11 and a half to one. I've actually had clients get gut disturbance from the high content of glucose in this product. Yeah, I can see that if you are consuming enough carbohydrates, you're going to have gut distress. Or if you don't have GI distress, you probably are going to be shorting yourself on carbohydrates because you're really not utilizing the those fructose channels or transporters. So that's unfortunate. All right, so let's look at the back here. It says hydrate, fuel, and build. This is a three out of four, or it gets like a three points out of four for hydration. It gets four points out of four for fuel. I do agree with that, sort of. I mean, there's enough carbohydrates, just not the right ones, the right ratio. And then build, which I'm assuming has something to do with like recovery or protein is a zero out of four. I'm assuming that because it doesn't say that on the package because there's no protein in here. So if we were going to try to make this better for fuel, Michelle alluded to the fact that while they list it as four out of four stars for being a fuel source, it doesn't actually work uh, really well because you can't comfortably consume that much per hour with it. To make it better, we need to add sugar or we need to add fructose. One of the two, sugar is a whole lot easier to add and that it brings a glucose and a fructose to the table. So to optimize this, you could probably do like one part uh, super fuel or scratch super high carb and then three parts sugar and that would actually make it a more optimal fuel for gut comfort and unfortunately fructose is sweet but if you really want to maximize your performance you really need to have more fructose than like a nine to one or ten to one what did what did you say i think it's eleven and a half oh, to eleven one. and a half just to one i thought off it was the top of my head. yeah that's just not going to be optimal sometimes I mean, I guess it depends on what your primary concern is. Are you more concerned about taste or are you more concerned about your performance? I mean, personally, I don't care if I'm drinking sludge. I want to perform <laughs> I want to perform well. I mean, if there's an option to have it taste good, obviously I want it to taste good, but I guess I would not want to short myself that much in my performance to have it taste less sweet. Even if I'm out riding for like 24 hours, it, that's just my preference. Let's read the marketing, shall we? Our sport super fuel drink mix was created for athletes who push so hard that they can't easily take in enough calories to perform at their best. Well, you can't take in enough calories to perform at your best because there's no fructose in here. Are you reading from their package? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm making commentary. <laughs> She's reading and making commentary while she reads. I'm making commentary. I'm just commenting on that first sentence. Gotcha. Second sentence. While traditional carbohydrate fueling options break down too fast for the gut to tolerate, we found that a heavier, more complex, and highly branched carbohydrate that digests steadily like real food does cluster dextrin, one serving gives you 400 calories plus the electrolytes lost in sweat to fuel and hydrate your big efforts without the energy spikes or digestive distress. 
Okay, so they're speaking to glycemic index and they're speaking to probably blood sugar spikes and like rebound hypoglycemia. Let me just say that yes, this highly branched, highly branched cluster dextrin does have a lower glycemic index than other carbohydrate sources. If you're continuously sipping on like a sucrose mix, which is like sugar water, you can avoid having those blood sugar spikes and crashes if you're just sipping steadily. So you don't need to have some fancy carbohydrate mix that is like 11 and a half to one glucose to fructose. Like this is true, but it's also misleading information. Uh, use it when there's no time to chew. So this is a drink mix. I agree with that. You wanna have something that you can drink rather than chew because it's just easier on the gut. And it's also just, I think, easier to take a swig of something than it is to, like chew something gummy or eat a banana. But well, so you're a pro cyclist. And so it might be really easy for you to drink on the bike. But what about the people who like wanna drink every 30 or 45 minutes? Could this like because it's a slower lower gi but still mostly glucose if you really look at it could they drink enough every 45 minutes could that work so you're saying what like they stop the bike and then they just chug it no or? maybe they're just less comfortable than you they're not they're comfortable riding and drinking maybe they're like a ultra runner and trails are super technical and they don't want to be drinking like every three minutes or every five minutes it's just easier to drink every 30 or every 45. speaking as a person who was like the worst cyclist ever not too long not too long ago technically i would say that the number one thing you should be working on is gaining more confidence or building that confidence in drinking on the bike for multiple reasons um and drinking for, with like both hands you know like just working on basic bike handling skills and same with trail running it's something to work on becoming more acquainted and comfortable with fueling while you're doing something technical but i suppose well <sighs> let's just say we don't want to I don't want to put in that work. <laughs> I've got three kids, a job, a second job. Right, but if you're putting in an hour, let's say you you only have time to ride for 30 minutes, like a few times a week, mm -hmm. you could still spend that time working on fueling while you're riding. Okay, but let's just hypothetically say, okay, okay. I want to spend that time listening to important podcasts and using my brain power and skill development in some other arena. Because okay. I'm not planning to be a pro cyclist. I just want to have fun. <laughs> okay. And I just am saying no to you. <laughs> I'm just saying no to and you. And I'm saying I want to drink scratch every 30 to 45 minutes. Could that work? Uh, you're not going to get enough carbohydrates. You're probably, well, it depends on the conditions, actually. It depends on how hot it is. It depends on how hard you're riding. If you're doing like a recovery ride and it's not that hot, sure, that'd probably be fine, but you're not going to be getting enough fuel. Let's say it's a warm ride. I'm sweating uh -huh. and I'm going like high aerobic, firm tempo, like pretty, okay. pretty good effort for three or four hours. And you're saying I'm having like one sip every 45 minutes of this? No, I'm saying... Uh, what if I just want to have like a few huge gulps or like, what if I just want to try to drink 24 ounces every 45 minutes to keep up with my sweat rate and to get all my fuel that's needed? I know I need hundred grams per hour. Can I do it by fueling every 30 to 45? So you're saying like chug an entire bottle every 45 minutes? Whatever it takes. I mean, you're going to have some GI distress if you do that. Like that's not the recommended way to fuel anyway. If you're chugging and then you're going through like a drought for 45 minutes or whatever where you're not getting anything that's like going to be like an uh, like an insult to your gut especially since there's no fructose it's just glucose mostly just glucose i would not recommend that so you're saying consuming 70 grams of glucose at once is not a good idea <laughs> No, no, it's really not. Even though this has like a lower glycemic index than other carbohydrates, that sounds like you're going to have some blood sugar spikes and crashes. Then you're going to be, your GI tract is going to be upset and you're going to have like water sloshing around in there. I mean, that just, it sounds like a terrible, terrible idea. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. I mean, like I said, I was very recently, I'm still working on myself. I'm still improving for sure, but I was like the worst bike handler ever. I didn't know how to shift. I didn't know, I couldn't do anything really at all. And so I understand the not wanting to shift. I understand the not wanting to wear bike shorts. I understand the not wanting to drink on the bike. And it's so worth that like developing that skill I promise you that if you were going to use this in a bike race how would you use this i would do at least three to one sugar to that and then i would add my own sodium citrate or i would add if i just wanted to spend lots of money on scratch products or something maybe i'm sponsored by scratch i would be consuming scratch hydration along with this because it's a much higher sodium content yeah. uh, per glucose or sugar content but honestly like mm -hmm. very little this and a lot of other stuff is the answer it's a good mild flavor let us know in the comments what you think of scratch high carb super high carb super high carb super, super fuel super fuel